Hey, thanks for joining us again here on RN Pros for a titanium edition of our construction tech talk series where we're joined by our, our sponsors. In this case, I've got Cameron Page uh, of Clear Story. How's your day going, sir? It's going great. How about you? Well, pretty good. I've been looking forward to this talk for a while. Uh, you know, I was uh, fascinated to learn about you guys initially quite a while back and have been meaning to spend more time with you anyway, because what you have going on as a product set from Clear Story, uh, to me, I found remarkable when I first heard about it, a standalone application that's designed to facilitate the change order process in the construction environment, which to me, it's like, well, every project management solution has that. So, you know, what's the deal or the, or the need to have something that is its own thing? Is there a particular reason that you're doing this like now and it became something that seemed a good thing to pursue? Yeah, definitely. I mean, my background <clears throat> is commercial construction. So I worked for one of the biggest builders in Northern California for about 10 years. And that's where I, I felt the pain of change orders on, you know, modern day construction projects. And we we call it the change order gap. And it's basically the gap between every company's financial system of record. You know, some companies use Procore, CMIC, Viewpoint, Sage, you know, wherever their project teams are managing their budget which contains private information is also where they're, you know, in theory, managing change orders. And they are right in the form of a potential change order. But again, because those systems are private by design, we operate with workflows outside of those systems to align between stakeholders on what's outstanding. And the most common document that I requested maybe half a million times from my trade partners um, was a change order log. And the reason why I asked for a change order log from each of my trade partners was I wanted to understand what risk was out there. And of course, if you have 30 trade partners on a project, getting a consistent updated log back from each one of them, one is inconsistent. They each have their own format. Um, two, they're slow to get back. They're often wrong or incomplete. Um, and the second you receive it, it's out of date, right? Because it's a static document. Um, and so that's what we call the change order gap. And on top of that, there's a bunch of other workflows that go into it, right? There's design changes where you just send them out to your trade partners and communicate them upstream to your client, trying to hunt down pricing on those. Um, field directed extra work, which is, you know, everyone hates it, but it's part of the industry, right? If a pipe breaks in a building and you need someone to fix it, you're not going to ask them for an estimated quote on what it costs to fix it. You're going to have them go fix it. And you're going to track it on a time and materials basis, and you're going to verify the work that was done. And so typically that, that uh, you know, I have one right here, actually, that um, process is done on triplicate carbon copy paper. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the workflows that falls in the change order gap. Um, and so that's the gap that we focus on. So when people hear, hey, you guys are change order software, initial reaction often is we already have that. <laughs> um and, you know, we really we really see ourselves as a must have complement to wherever you're doing your project budgeting so that you can know the data in your budget is actually accurate um, with the companies you're working with. And so, again, for a GC, that means all 20 or 30 of your trade partners, but also are you aligned with your client um, upstream? And so that's really the area that we that we focus on as a company. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think that that's an excellent ex explanation of that gap that does exist. Is there a reason uh, from your perspective that we're not seeing something like a, an ISO standard or, you know, something that would underpin something like we see in other industries like electronic data interchange where it's like, yeah, there might be a standard, different companies may be on different versions of it, but, you know, there's a way to kind of get these documents to flow back and forth. Yeah, no, it's an interesting question. And I think um, when it comes to construction documents, you know, AIA has you know, a whole suite of documents they've produced that are standard. One of the interesting documents that is missing is actually the change order request document. AIA has a change order document where you're going to issue an updated contract to a sub-tier contractor. Um, but the actual request document is a document that it's kind of the Wild West. You know, every company has their own format 
cover sheet template that they use to break down the change order request. And that's a lot of where the friction in the change order process occurs, right? Because, because every company has their own way of presenting it, um, <clears throat> it, it, there really is no standard. And when it comes to a GC, you know, a young project engineer trying to review a change order request and have it make sense, um, you know, they spend a lot of their time just getting the organization in front of them or the documentation in front of them, um, let alone actually digging in and understanding the contents of the document. And so, you know, I think we offer a suite of tools to one standardize just the organization process of receiving these documents. And yeah, so within the application, are there uh, you know, given bits of functionality that you know makes sense to explain here to help folks understand exactly what this thing's going to do for them? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, it's a little bit different for each persona, right? So, starting with specialty contractors, um, you know change orders represent some percentage of their overall revenue, right? On the low end, it's maybe 5%, but we work with, you know, depending on the type of trade, it can be as high as 30 or 40% of their annual revenue is made up of out of contract work that they're directed to do by their general contractor. And so that's really where cash flow for specialty contractors gets impacted. In, in our opinion, it's less on the actual billing side because they can at least account for that billing, right? The, the billing timeline is set in the contract. But when your contract increases by 100% and you have to wait six months on the change order to get approved and before you can bill for it, you're going to be really impacted. And so what we tell especially contractors is, you know, there's two parts to the approval process that can help you accelerate cash flow. The first part is how fast you actually um, process and present the documentation to your GC customer or whoever your customer is. And that's the piece that they are totally in control of. And so we offer them a suite of tools, you know, whether it's our mobile app for tracking TNM workout on the job site, it's instantly logged back in the home office with the click of a button, they can price a change order request and send it to their GC. So oftentimes what takes weeks or months can take minutes. Um, but then we have the only shareable change order log that's cloud-based in the industry. So you can create a link to your change order log and whether the GC is in our network or not, you can send it to them and they can have access to a digital change order log where all the documentation lives. And that's what we tell specialty contractors is the second half of improving your cash flow when it comes to change orders is making sure you are organized when you present yourself to your GC. And I as a former general contractor, I can't stress this enough. You know, what we do when we receive, you know, if we get 30 minutes in our busy day to review change order requests or in our busy week, yeah. we go to what's in front of us. And if we have to hunt down your documentation and different email threads and send, ask you for an updated log, all these things, it's going to delay your approval time, which delays your cash flow. Yeah. Um, so it seems like you've got a solution for both subs and generals, which... I mean, not every product out there you know, cuts across both those demographics, but uh, when it comes to figuring out which subcontractors and generals ought to be listening to this and saying to themselves, yeah, this is something that is a fit for my business. What are some things about like the size or complexity of those companies or you know, the size of, of projects they may be involved in? or the number of, of different trading partners they have that ought to you know, make them an excellent fit for clear story. Yeah, the way I would frame it is, the, the short answer is everyone. You know, if you deal with change order requests, you can use our software. Um, and the time to value with our software is literally like minutes. Like you, can, you can create an account right now online and use the free version. <laughs> yeah. And um, what I would say in terms of like size of company and things like that, you know, the company I worked for, you know, I, the biggest project I ever worked on was $300 million corporate campus, a ground up projects. All well, the that's way down not chump small, change. So, you know, yeah. All the way down to like small six week tenant improvement projects. And when I started the company, I knew it was really important that we could support those fast paced projects. And that's really where we focused on the early days. And the, re and the reason why is, a couple of reasons. One, from it helped us as a company build a product that was easy to onboard. Because if you can't get you, a six-week TI, you can't have two weeks of training and implementation. It has to be ready to work the first day. Um, 
but also on the smaller projects, especially for a general contractor, your fees are smaller. And one $5,000 change order request can have a pretty big impact on fee erosion. And by using our tool, you can almost completely mitigate that risk of unknown change orders or surprise change order requests, or maybe your superintendent signed a TNM ticket you weren't aware of. And after the project, you find it because the projects are so fast paced. So, so really what we tell customers in the market is, you know, we work with small, fast paced TI contractors all the way up to, you know, we're working on, you know, large chip factories and battery plants and uh, professional sports stadiums. I mean, all the way up to multi-billion dollar projects. And on the specialty contractor side, the same is true. You know, we, we really pride ourselves on helping SMB small business, you know, husband and wife painting contractors or paving grading contractors that maybe have three field users and, you know, two people in the office. Um, they can get a tremendous ROI out of our software. But on the larger end, you know, we work with the largest drywall company in the United States. We work with Kone Elevators. We work with the largest painting contractor in the U.S. So if someone again is like, wow, well, everybody, well, I'm part of that. Uh, and you're starting to wonder about, well, you know, you know, if I you know, want to explore this, you know, what kind of investment should I be anticipating here? How, what's the pricing strategy for people? So we try and keep it simple. It's a user-based pricing model. Um, there is a one a, a small setup fee as well um, that gets you started with a certain amount of users. Um, and the way we look at it is, you know, we are typically a complement to your internal financial software. So, and we are priced as such, is I guess what I would say. You know, we don't publish our pricing, but the ROI on our software is is pretty dramatic. Um you know, we, we work with customers who save hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars a year and pay a small fraction of that um, to use our software. Yeah. Yeah. So would it be like, you know, someone be able to you know, get by within like four figures for a year for a smaller company? For a smaller company, definitely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, you know, helps, I think a lot of people kind of put this into a bucket in terms of like, well, yeah, you know, how many different mishaps can uh, we avoid that would, you know, wipe that off the boards immediately. So yeah. we've talked a little bit about the problem that people are having, the solution you've got, who it's a fit for, uh, the pricing. That's kind of what we do here on Iron Pros. So what I'd really encourage people to do is dig around on Clear Stories profile on Iron Pros, you know, dig around and other things that we've you know, written about in the re in the research we'll continue to do into their product set. And yeah, you know, yeah, you know, Cameron, you know, I really appreciate you spending some time with us here and uh and and helping uh folks really kind of get their head around this. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity letting us, you know, tell our story and also appreciate all the work you guys are doing at, at Iron Pros for the industry. It's really cool to see this uh this coming together and giving, you know, our customers and prospects a place to go and find cool new things so thank you for having us well that's how we roll sir talk soon <laughs> sounds good